morning, Trainiacs. We're back. I actually miss this place. Enough to do a really big swim is just 2,000 easy cruisy kind of meters. Still swimming. Yesterday, we analyzed my run performance in Puerto Rico, which was nothing earth shattering, but the bike performance. I was very happy with that. Over the last few years, I've gone from a 246 to a 236 to a 226 to at Puerto Rico, a 218 six fastest overall bike split. It's really easy to get faster. You're gonna like this today because it is quite easy to get faster on the bike and I am going to explain how I chopped off almost 30 minutes over the course of two years. Trainiacs, the most common question that I got, or well, comment that I got after, after Puerto Rico was, holy geez, that was an intense bike ride that you did. Yeah, I'm pretty pumped up about it, about a 218. But it's not like right from the get-go, as soon as I took up triathlon, I was an awesome biker. I wanna show you just how things have progressed over the last couple of years. This here is my last two years on obstry.com. What you see is the very first Ironman branded race that I did was a 239 half Ironman bike, then a 243 half Ironman bike, then a 232, then a 226, then a 218. So I've consistently got faster. Now you'll hear me say here often that it's literally just time in the saddle to get faster on the bike. And that's true, but it's also a little bit of the composition of what you're doing because I wanna show you this. This here was the very first half Ironman that I did, the Duluth Superior Man. And I did a 227.44 bike. Bike was a little bit short, but we look at the miles per hour in this, compare it to the miles per hour that I did the next year, the very following year when I was actually putting in more time in the saddle and what happened, I got slower. So it's not just time in the saddle, you have to do the proper things when you're in that saddle. So that's what we're gonna explain. So the last couple of years when I've made the biggest gains in my bike performances, I've really only done just three workouts a week. And these are the workouts that I would recommend that most people do. Now you can do more if you have a lot more time, if you're looking for really peak performances, but even just over the last year, I've, I have done just these three workouts every single week on the bike. One being a long day, and this is a long day that gradually builds up to longer than the time that you're going to be on the bike. This is your over distance day. I talk about this a lot in a sprint. We're talking building up to a 35 kilometer ride in an Olympic around a 60 kilometer ride in a half Ironman somewhere around 100 to 110 kilometer ride in a full Ironman around a five and a half hour ride. You don't quite have to go over distance in that. The second workout that you need to do is an intense day. This tends to be really short. In my case, some of these intense workouts are as short as 30 minutes here inside on the trainer over the winter. Some are as long as an hour and 10 or 15 minutes with a group ride, but it's hitting that really peak intensity. So with the long ride, we're building the ability to pedal for a long period of time. With the intense ride, we're pushing up our top end of speed. And if we're constantly just thinking intense, really hard, and we're pushing ourselves into that uncomfortable spot, what's gonna happen is, well, your uncomfortable spot is gonna be here one week, and then the next week here, and the next week here, and the next week here, and gradually, your uncomfortable spot is going to get faster, faster, and more powerful. The third ride that you really need to do it's just a general ride, like go around, you can tootle around for an hour, couple hours, really no intensity, it's just turning the legs over, over and over. You can do this once a week, you can do this twice a week, but it's not really any sort of focus sort of ride on one thing or another. It's just more time in the saddle. 
Remember when I said that the composition is probably more important than just the outright time? That's displayed by the fact that one year I did probably less riding and went faster than the following year when I did more riding, but the composition wasn't quite right. So in that long ride, what you do is a long way out from the season, you're really just working on making sure that it's time in the saddle. You're not really working on intensity. You're just building the ability to turn the pedals over for hours and hours on end. So you might do this on a mountain bike. You might do this on a road bike. You might do this on a fat bike like we've done. It's really just, and I would actually encourage you to do it on a fat bike because it builds more technical skills, general riding skills, more stability right here but you're just building the ability to be on your bike for a long period of time. Getting closer to the race, starting about two months out from a race, we start building in a time at the end of that long ride that is at race pace and around race pace. And gradually, as you get closer and closer to the race, the amount of time that you spend at race pace becomes larger and larger. The composition of that intense day starts out with really, really short bursts of speed. We're talking 10 to 15 second intervals. And as you get closer and closer to a race, those 10 to 15 second intervals start stretching out to upwards of 10 minutes while the intensity is going down. So at the start of a race season, we're working at building the top end of our speed and closer and closer to a race, we start looking at holding speed for a longer period of time. More VO2 max kind of stuff, if you know that lingo. And then the last thing is that you wanna focus on strength, strength, and strength on the bike. This isn't just the intense efforts that we do, which does build your like greasy fast speed. What we wanna do is also build muscular endurance. So you can have all the speed in the world, but if you can only hold it for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour and a half, you're not going to be able to go fast for a long period of time. And what I was finding for years is that I had lots of speed, but I couldn't hold it for 90 kilometers. Couldn't even hold it for 40 kilometers. What I've done now is incorporated a bunch of low gear work in ranges of 40 to 70 cadence, and that builds the ability of your muscles to have muscular resilience, muscular endurance. You can perform the same repetitive motion under load and tension for a longer period of time. So you put all that together and just three bike workouts a week done consistently year after year. I've got from the slowest half Ironman bike that I did to the fastest, 15% faster to the point that I did the sixth fastest bike split going to 18 in half Ironman Puerto Rico. And it's not like I've been this all-star cyclist the whole time. I've always just said that getting faster on the bike is the easiest thing that a triathlete can do. You just have to do it right. Now, if you are interested, all of these workouts are periodized, are scheduled throughout the course of a season. All of the individual workouts have the indications of when to do the intense stuff, when to do the long stuff, when to do the low cadence work. All of this is in teamtrainiac.com. Go check it out, teamtrainiac.com. You get yourself 14 days for free, check it out. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't, whatever, that's all right. But it's there for you to check out and try. And uh, finally, as a little brighten up of your day, Google Florida man space and then put in your birthday. Mel, what did you get? What was your Florida man? I'm sorry? What was your Florida man? I uh, two good ones. One was um, Florida man threatens neighbor with machete named kindness. <laughs> and Florida man robs store dressed as Spider-Man. I got Florida man gets ushered out of a store for being <laughs> naked. I love Florida man. Go check them out. <laughs> uh, that makes sense. <laughs>